at the end of this one, I will make a deal with Daniel Craig. Stay tuned. Whoa! So it seems we have some new provocateurs on our hands and a new film that's coming out starring Daniel Craig is said to be one of the most provocative and thought provoking ones of the year. Buckle up, boys. Is the sperm still in there? Daniel Craig and Drew Starkey on making queer, 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 the year's most audacious love story. Of course, it's a love story. Just like Brokeback Mountain was a love story. Just like all oh, this. All right. I will leave my personal thoughts aside for the time being. However, this story is not for the squeamish. So while they were in an inter interview on Luca Guadagnino's, 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 we'll get it right one of these times. Just like we'll get our pronouns right. Um, maybe never. Who cares? New film Queer opens with a series of tableau, little still life images of glasses, trinkets, and books. The objects are meant to evoke the lives of its two lead characters. A couple of gays seeking refuge from their past and leaning into their desires in 1950s Mexico City. Seeking refuge from their past? Maybe it was the vaccine. It's an example the co-stars say, of his keen eye for how to evoke character through the material world. And then somehow this gets brought up. Is the sperm still in there? Now, what they're talking about, and I don't know how deeply I can go into detail on this in the YouTube video, they're talking about the opening title sequence, the credit crawl, so to speak. And apparently there was just, uh, you needed a UV, you didn't even need a UV light. I mean, it was still fresh and but that was their that was their level of artistry and then starkey says i think so they still kept it in there this goes on to be rebutted and said that was just a first cut because the first cut of this film was three and a half hours now they took it down to about two hours and 15 minutes and it is based on a beat generation writer william s burroughs a fictionalization of the author's own experience of getting drugged up and taking stuff up the butt because that's what drugs do to you kids. Apparently, they just they see, you know, you're not born with it. It always happens from other things. You got something else wrong. You inject a bunch of drugs into you and that's what turns you gay. Alex Jones would say it was the water, but we don't even freaking know anymore. And this is the first time that Daniel Craig has been in a film in any recent memory. We have Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Was it a trilogy yet? No, I think it's only two. But and then he also played James Bond. But he's really he hasn't showed up in anything. When he first came onto the scene, I will say Lair Cake is a freaking banger, as was the first James Bond movie. But he has kind of fallen off and maybe trying to do a little bit more method acting, even though he's terrible with the southern accent. But he's coming back. That's a poor choice of words in most circumstances, but not when we're talking about this film, because it's literally about coming on backs. Now, here, let's just boil it all down to everything. There are universal aspects to queer. The struggle to be truly vulnerable whatever that means, the experience of falling in love and battles with insecurity. Um, have you ever had a girlfriend that wants to look through your phone, even though y'all fell in love with each other? Those are battles of insecurity as well. Um, doesn't have to have anything to do with butt fucking. But a gay audience will likely find it particularly striking because there's no monkeypox. And no one ever takes an STD test. It's a film that's utterly unafraid to depict both the literal fact of sexuality and the inner turmoil that leads many to use sex to escape. So that's why, you know, abs not flabs for the gay community. Just look good enough and you can get all the diseases that you want. It, there's an inner turmoil behind it. They work out nonstop because... 
they're effed in the head. Sure. This is according to them, by the way. And I know I'm paraphrasing and I know I'm making light of this situation because fr quite frankly, it's fucking stupid to me. I've been in the character's world before, says the singer Omar Apollo, who plays yet someone else that Daniel Craig's sleeping with and humping in this movie. You're in a hotel, the guy's sitting down. Well, he feels like he's been there before. Well, he feels like he knows exactly what to do. Golly, this is disgusting to even talk about. The film's first cut. There we go. At three and a half hours. And then they go on to say it's like this generation's broke back mountain. I've had about enough of this, and I'm sure you have too. But it is something that is making the rounds. Daniel Craig known for being the everyman's man as James Bond, even though the series kind of fell off. I think most of that was writing. It wasn't due to his acting. Um, I actually quite liked him in Casino Royale. Oh, my goodness. Now he's proud of crying into other men's shirts and other things. I... It, yeah, cry. No, I can't even say that. Crying out both ends. And the first question is the sperm still there? What What is even going on? So here is my question. Here's my deal. I will offer you a deal, Daniel Radcliffe. I've seen some really freaking disturbing shit in my life, not only in real life, but also in films and exploitation dramas and banned films. I will watch your movie if you give me your wife. I'll take Rachel Weisz any day. You're obviously not doing anything with her. You're going to bathhouses and getting lubed up by other hairy men. She's way, she's being wasted with you, man. Send her to me. I got you. For the savant audience out there, will you see it just because? Will you stay away from it like the plague? just because of what I've said here and the more you find out because what I'm kind of thinking is that this might end up being like Oscar bait. It might be one of those things that is like, it's so artistic that it's going to get nominated for so much crap. And that's why it needs to be brought to our attention because if this is the kind of stuff that they are peddling to us and proud of, we already know that Hollywood's dead on the inside. But for the few left who haven't been paying attention, living under a rock, or maybe just letting things slide, um, it's getting worse and worse and worse. That's at least my opinion. What do y'all think? Malty from the GCA. We'll see you later.